Some pieces seem to have magical properties. When you touch them, it's like you instantly download ideas and envision a fully built robot around them. These, however, had something else. They connected together almost seamlessly. A new project idea was born. Welcome to Cut, Transform Glue, and welcome to the Dagger Project. Sometimes, even the most precise industrial parts can have some imperfections. This could result on an ever so slightly misaligned glue up, and to counter that, I try to remove the flashings and extra bits of plastic with some sanding. Right here, I'm putting those three magical pieces together to form the body of this new combat unit. And to strongly attach them, I'm using my favorite brand of CA glue and some baking soda. As I said before, these pieces seemed like they were made for each other, given how well they matched, but to be extra safe, on some spots, I added a bit of hot glue. Now, even though the pieces worked super well together, of course there were some open, empty areas, mostly on the bottom of the robot. I added whatever I could find in my collection to close these holes, but I'll deal with what was left open in just a minute. Right here I'm using a wood cut tool to remove an extra piece of plastic and on the top of it another great looking shape from a broken office printer. And with that the basic body shape was finished. I worked so fast with these awesome shapes that I couldn't be happier. Another couple of pieces with magical properties, these two. I simply love its shape, size and details. Some of you guys might even remember them from a Gribby hunting episode where I took apart a giant printer, full of good stuff. Well, I guess I'm glad they are made of good material. They'll be perfect as some side bots, maybe a couple of ENP or energy weapons of some sort. I wanted to keep them separate from the body, so I'm using some fake Lego pieces to attach everything together. I then made some 3D printed nests, I guess, where I glued the plastic bricks. Then I made a precise hole on the side of the body. My idea is to keep the side part as flush as possible to the body of the robot, and so I wanted to attach the Lego piece from the inside. This is why I taped it on the metal roller. In hindsight, I should have gone with this process before attaching the bottom body piece, but it is what it is, I guess. Then I of course attached the matching Lego pieces on the side pods. made the same process on both sides and was super happy with the looks. The logical next step is to take care of the holes on the bottom of the body. Now, finding ribbies to fit these holes would be a waste of time, and this is why 3D printing shines. I'm going with some ABS pieces which, even though trickier to print, are much easier to sand and glue. And as I also love to do, I'm not going with just 3D parts. I'm combining these designs with some cool detail griblies I have in my collection. I know this might sound pointless, but I think the end result really pays off. Right here on the back, I went with a piece of styrene to cover some ugly features, and on the top of it, a cool sci-fi toy piece that I've been saving for many years. It was then time to work on the weapon, the gun barrel, and for that I chose a couple of very good looking items. 
Then I grabbed my favorite Dremel tool bit and began making some changes. On the first section, the one that interfaces with the body, I added a piece that was designed to match its diameter and the angles of the body shape. Sounds confusing, but it's super simple. Then I added a simple tube that will make the connection to the barrel. Just so I could keep things separated, I'll make my life easier on the painting process. I also of course made some changes on the barrel pieces. Then I begin joining the pieces together as precise as possible. I don't want to end up with a crooked barrel. shape on the tip of the barrel is this cool sci-fi looking really and then not sure why I wanted to add an extra detail shape on the top of the robot near the base of the gun like a weird and unexpected air vent of some sort it is a combination of a 3d printed piece a good looking metal shape and a tiny plastic rod to make the attachment so far I was very happy with what I was seeing and I thought this one needed the first coat of primer and so I did. Now it is funny how the primer kind of brings everything together and now this model looks kind of empty. So let's go for some details. And again, I'm going with some printed pieces that were designed around some found items. It is my vice at this point, guys. I just can't help it. But to be honest, I think it makes total sense. I mean, if I had infinite resin, I'd be using mostly resin printed parts. With the FDM printers, the level of detail I'm able to get is not the same, so by combining the different types of parts, I truly believe I take the model to the next level. 3D printing resin for some reason, or I guess for a number of reasons, is kinda expensive. Check the links below if you wanna help me with that. But yeah, this is why I'm combining different techniques, like using filament shapes in addition to tiny little gribblies, getting the best of each world. I'm also, as you can see, using some laser cut shapes. These were cut on a public maker space using reclaimed acrylic from broken laptop screens. These types of flat details won't work anywhere on the model, but it also has its use. And then I had this weird idea of including a missile launcher on the back of the robot, kind of facing upwards. It was made using a piece of laser cut acrylic and some plastic beads. A couple of extra resin printed shapes from my collection here and there. And then I had this idea of taking the side pods, the energy weapons, and make a piece that matched this weird feature it had near the back. My goal, since this is an energy weapon, was to make a piece that looked like a heat sink. And I think I managed to do just that. Let me know what you think on the comments. And the last detail added was these two tube fittings here that I used to connect wires to the energy weapons later on the build. Now before I go, I wanted to share one last trick I just discovered. So I went and grabbed a laser cut acrylic shape, but I guess it could be any resistant shape like marrow or something and glued it on the surface of the primed model. And I believe a fresh coat of primer is the key here. And I used it as a template to make some panel lines. And let me tell ya, it worked so well. Let me know in the comments if you want a dedicated video on this topic. 
and this is pretty much it for this week's video, the first of a new series, the younger brother for my older combat units. A special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members which you can join to help me financially so I can keep going and maybe check some exclusive perks like access to a private Discord server where we share our builds and projects. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and as always, thanks for watching.